Hey guys, and welcome to FaithWorks Designs. I'm Faith, and today we are so excited to finally show you guys the Howler. So, let's get started. Alright, so I know this lighting is going to be a stark contrast to what we've ha had previously. But it feels like a million degrees outside, so <laughs> I'm turning those really hot lights off, and I apologize. Alright, so we have got all of our stuff and things. They're ready to go. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start working on our flap for our bag. And what you're going to do is you're going to cut right along the edge where the white and the red meet. And I have the pebble vinyl, and so I'm going to be adding a layer of Decoville light as my interfacing. Alright, now that we've got this cut out, let's go grab a deck of the light. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Alright, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So, I am putting the deck of the light a quarter of an inch away from the edges so that it is out of my seam allowance. You don't have to use deck of the light. You can use whatever you want, whatever you normally use when you're working with vinyl or if you've got another base that you're working with. I'm not sure exactly what they're going to offer this in just yet. You're going to need to use some kind of good interfacing for this. Now we're going to take this to the ironing board and we're going to go ahead and fuse those two together. I went ahead and I grabbed my lighting fabric and I went ahead and I interfaced that as well, just so that there's one less thing I had to do. Um, so make sure that you interface this. I used uh, Pelon 950F. I use it just because it's a little stiffer. Um, so let's go iron this together. Alright, so we've got all of that interfaced. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lining piece. And I'm going to turn it sideways so you guys can see all of this. I'm going to take my vinyl piece and I'm going to put it right sides together with my lining. And I'm going to line it up. Mine is off because mine is the prototype. If yours is off, just make sure that you line up the top right here so that your teeth will be right. I'm just going to kind of center it as best I can. And then I'm going to throw weight on it so it doesn't move on me. I'm going to cut my lining. Um, either way, you probably want to do this, even if yours is exactly the same. You probably want to go ahead and take your vinyl and lay it down on top of your lining fabric just to make sure that they are absolutely the same measurement. Um, hopefully, we got this straight. But if we didn't, just do your best to line them up together. Okay, now we are going to set this aside for a minute. Don't worry about it guys, don't worry about the white that you can see. All of that is going to be in my seam allowance. I'm not worried about it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our ribbon. Alright, so you're going to have to find ten and a quarter. And then what you're going to do is we're going to put the tail end of your ribbon at that mark. And then you're going to have to find the center right there. Okay, so that's perfect. I got it dead in the center. Um, it wasn't quite five and a half. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab some double-sided tape. I just want to do a little bit. Like right that much. We don't want it to be past our stitch line there. So I'm going to fold this over, pull off my double sided tape, and make sure that it's center. I'm going to check it again. 
we're good and centered. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this to the sewing machine with our burgundy thread again. And you're going to want to start your stitches right where this last burgundy thread um, that we stopped and we burnt. We're going to come down, around, and back up to our very last stitch right here. Alright, so we are going to start on the side making sure that our stitch length is a 4 just like where we started. I'm going to try really hard to match up where I stop because I don't want to go over it twice and if I do it's completely okay. I am not going to die over it. It'll be fine. And I hung on to my tail of thread so that I can pull it back through. Make sure that you hold on to that thread. Now, I am going to take my threads and pull them through, and hopefully I did it at the right spot. We'll see. Alright, perfect. I'm happy. I know it's going to be hard to see that, but I did it. Alright, I'm going to tie these off because I feel like they're going to get pulled on a little bit. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and tie them and then burn the ends of my thread just in case. All right guys, so we are at the last part of prepping our bag and we can do a couple of things. You can cut the white off of the edge of this tag. You can leave the white part of the edge of this tag. You can um, use some spray adhesive and double this up so it's a little bit thicker and then edge coat it. You can do all of that. I'm gonna just cut the white edge away so that the red is kind of like what's sticking out and then I'm going to sew it on like that. Um, just whatever you want to do, do it. If you've got the extra time to do the edge coating and all, go for it. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this at the very end of my ribbon. That's what's going to cover um, all of this up. So what I'd like to do is to make sure there's about a half an inch um, between the ribbon and the top of your tag. It's just to make sure that um, the end of this gets covered and it gets sewn up um, when you go all the way around. I'll put two pieces of double sided tape on there. Alright, so take the tape off. And then you can probably feel with your fingers and take your tape measure or something and we want to make sure that this isn't weevil wobbly either. I think that's just right. There we go. Alright, so I can feel with my fingers that there's about a half an inch of the ribbon underneath of this. You want this underneath of this so you don't have that raw edge showing. Um, so all I'm going to do is stitch all the way around with my gray thread and finish the back panel up. Alright, so I've got my stitch length back at a 4. I'm just going inside of where the gray and the red meet and I'll show you when I get done. Um, just around the edge. Alright. So it should look like this. I just did right on the edge right there, all the way around. That's nice and secure. I'm also going to go ahead and uh, make knots on the back just to make sure that this doesn't come undone. All right, so we got one more thing to do to our front panel, um, and that's put our snap in. And the, if you grab the magnetic snaps, from K&A, the Weasley emblem, or if you just got regular snaps, um, we're going to need to put this on. So, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this over, and what we're going to do is we're going to measure up two and three quarters. I'm going to center my ruler 
and then find the center. Now I'm going to take my washer and I'm going to place it on my dot and then I'm going to make a mark on the two sides of the dot. I am also going to grab that one-sided interfacing just as a little stabilizer for my magnetic snap. I'm only going to be using the uh, one-sided interfacing on this bottom one. Um, can't really use it on the top ones because it's just it's way too thick. So I'm just going to open up my holes. After I've opened my holes with my seam ripper, I'm going to place this part, the female part, through here. Then I'm going to put my one-sided interfacing and then I'm going to put my washer on top of that. And I'm going to squish down my washer. Ugh. And pull those apart just like that. Now we've prepped all of, we've done enough. <laughs> we've prepped everything and we're ready to go. We can finally attach the lining in the main panel. Now I know what you're thinking. This bad boy. Yep, we're going to get to him in just a minute. So take your lining right side to the right side of your outside fabric. I'm actually going to do it this way so I can see it. And I'm going to start clipping around it. Alright, for a minute, we're going to take this piece and very gently fold it back. We're going to try really hard not to smush it when we go to sew around it so don't take your hand and like smush it. So I'm just going to clip the rest of this up and then we're going to take it to the sewing machine. Alright, so what I didn't show in the video was I found the center and then I marked two inches over and then two inches over to the other side. I made sure that I had a four inch opening so that we could turn this inside out. Um, I am also going to be using a three stitch length and I probably should get a smaller needle in. We'll chance it. Uh, we're going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. I'm living dangerously today. Normally when I sew the vinyl, I'll use like a, a 12 needle. Now I'm going to go all the way back around again. Um, I did a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to stitch right beside it just to try and take some of the stress off of that thread and off of that seam. So I'm going to do that real quick and then we'll turn it inside out. All right, so we've got it sewn all the way around. I wanted to show you guys what I meant by stitching right beside each other. It's just my uh, fourth of an inch and then just kind of right beside it. Now on the very bottom, I'm going to cut my corners off so that when I turn it inside out, hopefully it'll lay flat. Alright, so now we're going to take this I'm kind of like squishing the body of it up so that it'll fit through a little easier. Did you enjoy that struggle bus tour? <laughs> Alright, now we need to make sure that these corners are nice and crisp and they are not. So I have got my non-sharp scissors. If you've got another tool that can kind of straighten out your corners, go ahead and do that. And what I mean by non-sharp, I mean like the tip is kind of rounded. So whenever I've got to do stuff like that, I always tend to use them. Okay, now, this is going to be one of those other weird things that I tell you to do. 
what we're going to do is we're going to clip all the way around this thing so that the vinyl and the lining lay nice and flat. And then we're going to top stitch around it. Now, we are not top stitching all the way around it. We are going to kind of do like a partial, um, a partial top stitching so that we can come back later on and, do, and finish up the rest. This is just how I had to figure out in my brain how to do it. Um, we're going to be putting that magnet in the very top. We need to be able to get into our bag to be able to do that. But we also need it to already be top stitched so that we can put our magnet on right there. So we're just going to do a partial top stitch for now to make that happen. It'll all make sense. These are all make sense in just a little while. Now we're not going to mess with this bottom right here. We're going to take our ruler wherever it went. <laughs> so where the end of your bag, like where that seam is, you want to go up six inches. We're going to take some sort of marker that is um, going to be able to be wiped off or something like that. And we're going to make a little mark on each side. That tells us where to start, start and where to stop. Now, I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. And an eighth of an inch away from the edge, I'm going to start sewing here. Come, come down, around. I'm going to move this out of my way. I'm going to keep going, keep going, keep going until I get back to my other mark. All right, so I've got my stitch length at a four. I'm going to be sewing an eighth of an inch away from the edge. You're going to want to pull your strings through and then let's go do the um, magnetic snap. All right, so we're going to be working on the part where we're working on our magnetic snap. So your snap is going to come with like your outer shell. So you're going to have your outer shell and the W for Weasley. And then on the back, you're going to have this part with screws. I went ahead and took those out. I've got my handy dandy screwdriver with me. I have got my handy dandy hole punch. Um, this is really nice so that I don't have to get out my big cam snap press. I have got another marking tool so that I can mark where I need to make my holes. And then I have got some fray check to kind of uh, make sure that none of this stuff unravels. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the Weasley seal. Go ahead and take all of your screws off and everything like that. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to kind of lay it where we want it kind of in the center of your ribbon. This isn't upside down. All right, we're going to lay it in the center of our ribbon and kind of where it branches out. I think right there would be good. All right, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to put a lot of weight on it. Okay, so I'm going to stand up right now and I'm going to put some weight on it. And that is going to create some indentions for us. Now, before you move it up, grab your marking tool and have it ready to go okay all right now lift it up and you should have a couple of spots where you see where those indentations were hopefully you can see them this one came out really good so you can see that spot all right we got that now we're going to grab our hole punch and I'm going to put it on the dot and it you might have to do this more than once because this is a lot of layers it's a lot to ask and go ahead and do all three and make sure you went all the way through 
you didn't, you may have to do it again. All right, so I had to pull this back and use my hole cutter because it, there was, it was just so thick. My, my hole cutter was like, no, nah, I don't think so. All right, so we're going to take Weasley emblem and we're going to make sure, I'm going to lift this up. And I'm going to push those little stems through that ribbon first. That's the very first thing I'm, I'm going to do because this is really thick and it's asking a lot. Okay, so the stems are in there good. I just had to fight with it for a minute. Ugh, it's just really thick with that um, ribbon and everything right there. So I'm just going to make sure that it's pressed good. All right, then I'm going to press that into this and turn this over. I'm going to make sure I can see all of my holes. Okay, so I know you can't see it, <laughs> but I can see my holes right there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up all of my holes and then I'm going to grab my marking tool and I'm going to mark right there those two little lines right here. Now at this point we are not using any at all <laughs> one-sided interfacing because this thing is thick and it's not going to let you do everything that we need to do with that. So don't add any more one-sided interfacing to your other magnet end. Alright, so I've put it my, my the back of my magnet on here. I've made my two marks. Now I'm going to take my hand through this hole and if you've got larger hands keep that in mind when you're leaving your opening for your hole to turn everything inside out. Make sure that you leave yourself enough space so that you can get your hand in there. I have small hands and I didn't think about that when I was telling you guys about the other. Sorry. Alright, so I'm going to grab my magnet and put it back where it's supposed to be. I'm going to add the magnetic magnet piece. I'm going to line up my holes. I'm just trying to make sure I'm good to go before I grab it. Alright, so I've got my thumb inside of here. Hopefully you can see it moving around. I've got my thumb in here. I'm going to place my thumb on top of that spot and I'm going to hold it tight. I am going to pull it to the back of the purse where we have our opening. I'm trying really hard not to rip any seams or anything. Ugh, you don't want to pull it all the way back through but just enough so that you can put the washer on. And then bend those out. Ugh. Bend those like that. Okay. So that's in place. Woo! Alright. That was a lot of work, wasn't it? <laughs> Alright. Now we're going to have to work again to make sure that the, the stem is still poking through our ribbon. And it keeps wanting to pop out. Alright. There we go. So it's popping through. I'm going to put it back into here. Make, I'm just kind of overlooking what's going on. You want to look down and make sure that you can still see them. And what I like to do is take one of my screws and I like to put it in there and go ahead and see if I can screw it in. If I can screw it in, I've lined everything up like I'm supposed to. If it seems like it just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning, I might not be at the right spot. All right, there we go. So that's in the right spot. Now, I'm going to take that out. Now, I know this seems like a lot of extra work, but I'd rather do this than get frustrated. So I'm going to open this up. Oh, come on. I used to be able to do that one-handed. I'm going to put a drop or two of the fray check in. Then I'm going to grab my screw and place it back in there. And you may have to push down because there are so many layers in between this. And I'm only going to screw down but so hard right this second. But when I get finished, I'm going to do it a little bit more. Make sure that it's in there good. So again, I'm just going to be kind of putting it there and seeing what happens. 
Let's see if I'm fitting it right. Because sometimes it'll just keep turning. All right, that's a good spot. It stopped turning. You do not want to lose those little screws. I always have a thing of a double-sided tape. I don't think you can see it in the viewfinder, but um, I always have this thing of double-sided tape beside me. And I put all of my pieces inside of the inside of it so that I can find my screws and they don't go rolling off my desk. Okay. Now, last one. Let's make sure I got some debris here. Just going to make sure I'm in the right spot. Okay. Okay. All right. So we got that all attached, our magnet. So now we're going to go down to the other end and we're going to go ahead and top stitching all the way around. All right, so I am just going to put my needle back down where I ended, or I'm going to try hard to make sure uh, make sure your stitch length is still at a four. All right. Pull those threads through, burn them, and then we're almost done. Woo! All right, so this is what I was talking about, my double-sided tape. I keep all of my parts in there, and it kind of keeps everything organized for me. So I like having that out when I'm going to do my magnetic snaps like that. All right, we got both of our pieces. We're almost done, you guys. <laughs> you as tired as I am? Okay. All right, first things first. What we're going to do, uh, let me find my side. What we're going to do is kind of place this as centered as you can get it on your main panel. And you're going to have to either clip or do something so that it stays still. Okay, now just like we did with the other ones, we're going to measure in one inch and then up four and a half inches. All right, so right on the edge of our panel, not your outside fabric, but your panel itself, like this edge right here. You're going to measure four and a half up, and you might have to push down a little bit to, to get it. And then you want to do one inch over from your panel. All right, so I'm not going to lie to you, this is not going to be easy <laughs> because you've got all of this bulk in the way. So what I kind of do is kind of like pull it out of the way when I'm going to sew on this side and I'll take you to the sewing machine so you can see. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to stitch all the way around like we have been. All right, so I have got gray thread in my top, red thread in my bottom. Hopefully it'll do better this time. We'll see. I've adjusted my attention a little bit. Hopefully it'll be better. Um, you're going to make sure that you backstitch just like you did with everything else. Get my thread out of the way. You guys aren't going to be able to see much, but I'm going to pull this out as much as I can. Right. 
Okay, and then let's turn it around. All right, now we just have to attach the back and we're done. So I've already got everything marked one inch in, four and a half down, and then one inch in here so that I have my sewing lines. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab our ruler. Now, six inches. So we are going to take our ruler and at the very edge of our flap right here, and I know there's a glare, sorry about that. At the six inch mark, we're going to put the very top of our back little like panel thing here at six inches. So let me grab some clips. Again, I'm gonna put them kind of like towards the middle so that they're not kind of all up here. You can put an extra one here and here just to kind of hold it together. Make sure that this panel is kind of centered on your uh, main flap so that it's not like janky like that. You just want to make sure that it's straight. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this to the sewing machine and make sure we back, back stitch right here. Come down, around, and back up again, back stitching again. Alright, so I've still got my stitch length to a four. And go ahead. Make sure everything's straight before I start to sew. And make sure that you hold on to your thread tails when you start sewing. I'm taking my scissors and just moving those. Now I'm going to back stitch. Now you guys aren't going to be able to see this, <laughs> but you kind of have to push it out of your way. Now that you've got the back part all sewn to your main panel, the last thing that we're going to do to it is we're going to take um, our flap right here that isn't connected to anything and this flap and we're going to connect them just like we've done with the rest of them so it can be a part of that accordion part of the thing. So you're going to have to really make sure that this is out of the way. I'm just going to kind of bend it back. It might be a little difficult to do this because there are so many layers now, but just make sure nothing is underneath of it that you don't want underneath of it. Uh, I still have my stitch length at a four. And I'm gonna back stitch. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the, uh, the opposite side too. So we want to make sure that we get both sides. And this is going to be the side that I have my open seam. So we're going to need to make sure that we catch that seam. And again, we're just going to kind of push everything out of the way. So we've got that all sewn up. The next thing that we're going to need to do is actually make this a purse. Now you could leave it like this and it would be like a cute little clutch and you could just carry it around like that. But we're going to add a strap to ours. So what I purchased was some of these little like strap connectors and they come with little screws. And then you just make a hole in your project and you take this, make sure that you put some fray check in there and then just screw this in and then you're good to go. 
I also have a smaller chain today. Um, I was waiting for my other one to come in the mail. It hasn't come in yet. Um, but just for showing you guys how to do this purposes, you're going to need some kind of chain. I believe a lot of people sell them in 45 inch, give or take or so. All right, so let's get this started. So I'm going to grab my purse. I'm going to measure four and three quarters down from from this little lip right here. I'm measuring four and three quarters down. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to center my ruler so that um, I have an inch mark here and an inch mark here. Just center it the best you can. And then I'm going to measure in one inch. And I'm going to put a little dot right there and right there. Next thing that I'm going to do is I am going to grab our little hole punch thing that we got. And I'm going to put it right on top of that hole. Next thing we're going to do is the screw portion of it that has the stem is going to go on the inside. Now you could have done this on the outside of your panel when we were doing the magnet and all. I just didn't want to have to keep worrying about this, all of this standing out when I was trying to sew everything together. So I put it on last. Um, you can always do it before then, but you just got to be careful that you're not accidentally catching it. Yeah, I didn't want to mess with any of that. <laughs> so, <clears throat> next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some fray check real quick because I forgot. So, let's grab some of that. All right, so I'm just going to put a little bit around my fabric. I'm going to put my screw in like that. And then, before I go any further, I have learned through this project that E6000 is my friend. I'm just going to put a teeny tiny bit on the screw so that this never comes off. Because I don't want it to come off. So you're just going to take this end, hopefully you can see everything that I'm doing, and then screw that on like that and you can get your screwdriver out and just make sure that it's nice and tight all right there we go i'm gonna go grab my screwdriver and screw this in all right so make sure that you tighten it from this side if you try and tighten it from this side it's just going to keep spinning because that's what it's made to do so just make sure that you take a screwdriver and screw that in let me grab my furry check. Let's do the other side. We're almost done. All right, so stick that in, in there. I'm going to put the little stem through. And then I'm going to grab my E6000. All right, and then I'm going to put my little cap on like that and then I'm going to turn it over and screw it in. Nice and tight. Alright, now your purse part is done. All you need to do is add your strap And you're all done. All right, and you thought you were done. <laughs> In case you guys haven't noticed, there is one panel that did not get sewn up on the sides. Um, what we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to do one of a couple things. You could go ahead and take these sides together and do just like you did on this side. And so, just like you did on this side and then kind of sew down but that defeats the purpose of having the letter because then it won't open like you want it to. Um, you could find the place where you have it open and then just kind of top stitch it. It's up to you. 
but I am going to show you guys how to do a ladder stitch to close it so that you won't see it at all. I've got it doubled over because I want a little extra string, but we're only going to be using it so that there's one thing of thread through it. You don't want to double it up because then you'll definitely see it through the fabric. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it through the inside. So I went up and through the inside. This is up and through the inside. If you've never done a ladder stitch before, it's really super easy. It is not that complicated. Alright, I'm going to turn this to me so I can actually see what I'm doing. Alright, so I'm coming through this side. I'm going to go back down through that side and I'll show you in just a second. So with the ladder stitch, you're just kind of going back and forth, back and forth. My thread came up through this side. Now I came back over to this side and through just a smidge, like an eighth of an inch. Just stick your needle through and up again. This is going to make sense, I promise. Just follow along. Just hold on. Alright, now you can take your thread, if this will help you, and pull it across. You see where your thread lands? I know it's beige on beige and it's not super helpful, or gray on gray. So wherever your thread lands across from where you, your thread is coming out on the right side, you need to put your needle through the left side so that you can have your crisscross. Alright, so the thread is on the right, your needle goes on the left. You put it in like an eighth of an inch, pull it through. Now we're going to go, our thread is coming up through our left, we're going to put it through our right about an eighth of an inch. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. We're going to pull it through. Don't pull it tight just yet. I want to show you guys the magic of the ladder stitch. So the thread is coming up through our right. We're going to want to go to the left. Go in a little bit. You see how it's just kind of go jumping from side to side. You should have a bunch of thread that just looks like it's coming straight across. You see how these three right here are? They look like they're coming straight across. So it's in the left. I'm going to go to the right, right across from where the thread is coming out, and back up again. Um, if, if this is too hard to see, I completely understand because of the gray fabric and then the gray thread. I completely understand that. But there are like a million videos on YouTube that you can look up how to do um, a ladder stitch. I actually have a video where I did the um, uh, reusable scrubby pads. And so I do it in that video too, but it's a little clearer. My thread is in the right. I'm going to go to the left. You're just going back and forth and back and forth until you get to the end. So I want to show you guys real quick just so you can kind of see what is magically happening when you use, when you learn a ladder stitch, it really, really comes in handy. And if you don't know how to do it, you should really learn how to do it because I've used it a lot. So just pull your thread and look at that. You can't even see, you can't even see where your stitches are. It looks like it's completely closed up and you just don't even see it. All right, so I'm going to keep going from left to right, and I'll show you how I um, hide my knot at the end. I'm using the thread that I used for sewing this all together, just so that it would kind of complement it really well. Um, but it, the thread that I'm using is a little bit thicker. If you wanted to use a thinner thread, you could. And this is the last step, and then your bag is all done. So you want to go a little ways, and then go ahead and pull your thread through. 
You don't want to wait till you're all done to pull it because it might be too much strain on your thread. So I go a few few stitches up and then pull and you can't even see it. I love the ladder stitch. I'm so glad that I ran in. I think it was some Facebook post or something. One of those crazy five minute craft videos, I think. And I saw the stitch and I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. That way you don't even see where you're stitching. And ever since then, I've, I've used it a bunch on a, a bunch of different things. Alright. So we're back to where our stitches start. And I'm going to go a little over it. Pulling my thread. Okay. We're there. Now I'm going to make two knots. Just two. You want to keep your knots close to your panel. I'm doing three because one of my knots was just wanting to be misbehave. Alright, now we're going to take our thread and put it back down into our seam, like right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm making it not go through the top one. I'm making it go through the bottom fabric. So I put my needle between the two of the fabrics and then made it come through the lining of the fabric. You don't see my needle at the top. You just see it on the bottom. So I'm going to pull that through. And you're just going to gently pull till your... Um, till your knot is on the inside. Then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to pull it kind of taut, so kind of tight, and then I'm going to snip my thread and then if you just do this, it disappears. You can't even see it. A ladder stitch is a really great thing to learn how to do, so if you don't know how to do it, learn how to do it. It'll really help you out. Alright, we're done! Yay! It's our cute little purse. I'm so happy with how this turned out and I hope you guys really liked it. All right guys, so what did you think? I hope you guys like this purse. It was really, really cool to do um, and to have options. So we have the purse and we also have the wallet. So if you wanted a purse to carry around, we've got you covered. Um, <laughs> if you wanna carry a wallet around, we've got you covered. <laughs> uh, if you want to see the wallet tutorial, it will be on sometime around the time that we post the videos for uh, the Howler Purse. They will all be coming out soon. I have six Harry Potter bags coming out for this round, so there, there is going to be a whole slew of videos coming out. I can't tell you when, but they're coming. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up, or if you want to subscribe and see some of the more videos that we've got coming out, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions, comments, I normally check my YouTube stuff first thing in the morning. But if it's the middle of the day and you're working on a project and you're like, I'm not really sure what to do, can somebody help me out? Go on k and Custom Fabrics Facebook page. We have all of our testers making these now so that we can have extra people making them, making sure that they're just right for you guys. Um, and they will have made them so they can answer any questions that you guys are going to have. So make sure that you check out the page. Also, also, make sure that you sh show your uh, makes to us. We would love to see you guys in all of your house robes with your howlers. Thanks again for joining us on Faith Works Designs. Bye, guys.